Hi everyone, so I've been getting a lot of requests you guys want me to do a tutorial and just kind of walk you through beginning to end. That's what I'm going to be doing with these mushrooms. I'm going to take it back to basics and also explain some of the materials I'm using. I like to use the medium firm cost clay. The reason I do is because it stays flexible and when I use polymer and I have sculptures with really small pieces they do tend to break off it might just be me if you guys like polymer and uh, are happy with it use what you know it's going to work for these mushrooms got some armature wire pick that up at michael's uh, just a variety of tools whatever you like wire cutter a little wrench i use this blade um, you can use an exacto knife i'll use scissors sometimes as well a rolling pin. The other thing I like about this clay is I don't have to have a pasta maker. You can see how easily I break it apart and I can just condition it with my hands. Some tin foil and this is just to keep your sculptures from being too heavy. So we're going to jump right in. I'm taking a piece of wire here and I'm going to twist it around itself but only at the bottom. That top piece is going to be sticking out of the uh, mushroom. Wrapping some tin foil around it, I'm going to keep the base a little bit thicker and as I work to the top it becomes thinner. Rolling out some clay, you're going to squish it right onto the foil. You're just going to keep adding until you have the whole thing covered and just work your way to the top there. Now I'm going to bend it into place. I'm adding some texture. All you got to do is roll up some foil and you can put as much as you want. Here I felt like I put too much so I'm smoothing it out with my fingers. I'm using some foil for the top part of the mushroom. There's an easier way of doing this. You can go either way. So you can actually form that foil and put the uh, clay on it before you stick it on the wire. So I'm doing it the opposite. I'm putting the foil on first and then I put a little bit of clay on the underside and then I'm going to bake it. That'll hold it in place and then uh, I'll work the top part of the mushroom. So when you're baking cos clay, it's 275, 25 minutes. I think it's the same as polymer. The only difference is um, I like to preheat the oven. The reason I like to preheat is because I feel like it can get cracks if you're trying to bend it and it seems to change the consistency a little bit. So just something that I've found. There you see me putting it on the underside. Just adding some balls of clay here. We're going to put some knobs on this thing. We got the textures in it. Um, I, I love when mushrooms have just all these little interesting pieces and they're fun to paint too. I'm making them different sizes. I don't want anything too uniform. Okay, we're moving on to the next mushroom. I'm going to grab three pieces of wire. I'm going to be covering these with uh, some foil. Uh, you're going to leave a little bit of that wire piece sticking out at the bottom. I'm going to be covering those with clay and baking those. So I'm working on the witch mushroom here. I'm just adding some eyeballs to the stem. You can uh, just put an indent into the uh, stem here and add a ball of clay. And then you can take a tool and just kind of outline.
Just adding that top part to it, putting that in the oven, and then I'm going to be moving on to the uh, pumpkin mushroom. And same thing, just cover with clay, just squish it on there. Uh, make sure that you don't have any holes. Just keep adding clay to it and just work your way to the top. When it looks something like this, you're going to be adding the uh, top part of it and uh, doing the same thing, just having some of that clay spill onto uh, the foil. And then I'm going to be putting the face on this guy. So I'm uh, outlining the eyes. I'm going to be removing some of that clay to give it some depth. I'm doing the same thing with the nose here and I'm also going to be carving the mouth. I'm not adding the teeth yet. I'm going to do that once it's uh, baked. So once you're happy with how it looks, uh, you're going to stick it in the oven. Now I'm back to the ghost mushrooms. I'm adding them to a clay base. They're gonna be a little bit flimsy before you bake them again. I'm just gonna be adding a couple of these knobs to the base and then they're going back in the oven. So this is uh, the witch hat we're gonna be doing now and you're just gonna be squishing that clay onto the bottom. I'm sure there's a better word for it. But that's basically what I'm doing is just squishing it on there. Just keep working it. Until it looks something like this. And then it's going to be going back into the oven. You're going to bend it into shape a little bit first. All right, back to working on that first mushroom. I'm just finishing off the top there. And uh, what I really like about mushrooms is they're not, they're not really hard to make because you don't have to be perfect. All those little flaws they have, they uh, actually make them look good. Then I'm just gonna be adding some balls of clay to the top. And this one's ready to go back in the oven for the last bake. So now I'm gonna finish off this witch hat and I'm just twisting that clay on there and working it to the top. Once I get to the top, I'm just gonna curl that under a little bit. And then we're gonna do this really easy nose. I'm just taking this piece of clay and I'm just gonna squish it on there, work it in a little bit, and uh, then I'm gonna be pulling the tip because I'm gonna have it uh, point. Got a little curve going there. When you add the nostrils to any nose is uh, when you actually feel like it starts looking like a nose. Got to add some warts to it.
And uh, once that's complete, you're going to stick it in the oven for its last bake too. And then I'm going to be moving on to the pumpkin mushroom. We're going to add that stem. You're just going to squish it around, twist it up a little bit. I did add some Sculpey here. It's a uh, bake adhesive. And then I'm going to stick the uh, stem right there on the top and just form it a little bit until I like the way that it looks. Then I'm going to be taking some wire and I'm just going to twist that around. Those are going to be the little squiggly pieces sticking out of the top. I'm just going to stick it right into the clay. I made different sizes. The last one is going to be a little bit bigger. And all we have left to do with this is the teeth. And uh, like I said before, this is already baked, so I'm just taking little pieces of clay, using my tool, and just kind of forming them into uh, the shape that I need. Take that excess out of there. So that's going into the oven for its last bake. I'm gonna start working on these uh, ghosts again, and this is the only time that I use the pasta maker because I wanted to have an actual sheet that I just kind of lay on these ghosts. And I'm just gonna be folding some creases into it and uh, some wrinkles. I want it to look like an old sheet, so it's gonna have some tears and it's not gonna be perfect. And I did bake in between each one because I didn't want to mess them up. And that's mainly the reason why I bake so much is I get to a certain point where I feel like, okay, if I continue working, I'm just going to mess something up. So if you're at that point, go ahead and bake it. That way it's safe and then you can continue working on it. Yep, you're just going to put it into place however you like it. Tearing off some of those pieces at the bottom there too. You're gonna uh, tear some holes into the clay. We're gonna make some eyes here. The mouth I'm just gonna paint on there. And I'm adding some patches. Okay, now that you've finished baking everything, I'm gonna paint all the uh, sculptures. Uh, I'm gonna rush through this just a little bit. If you guys want me to do a more detailed uh, painting video, I can absolutely do that. Um, so basically what I do with most of my sculptures, I put a dark base on here and I'm mixing a little bit of brown and black, and I'm gonna do that to all the sculptures. If you have an airbrush, it will make it so much easier. Uh, mine's not working right now, but that gives me a good opportunity to show you guys that uh, you can achieve the same thing. I use a makeup brush, just a generic makeup brush, and uh, it just helps to cover those crevices a little bit better. So here I'm still using the makeup brush. I'm gonna put that first coat on the uh, pumpkin and I'm trying not to cover too many of the dark areas, just lightly brushing it on. And I'm just going to keep doing that, let it dry in between. Now I'm using a toothbrush and uh, just putting some green brownish uh, speckles all over. Just makes it more interesting. The more colors you have, the more textures. So I'm darkening some of those areas that accidentally got some orange on it. I'm putting some white highlights in here and I'm going to be going over it with yellow. And the reason I use white first is because it makes that yellow pop a little bit more. I'm going to do that around the eyes and the nose. I 
Also going to do the teeth. Adding some more highlights to it, different shades of orange. And now moving on to the top part of it. And same thing, I'm just kind of mixing colors. You can kind of see how there's green going on, yellow going on. I don't like just one color. It, it makes it look very matte. I'm brushing on some highlights, some yellow. Now I'm moving on to the ghosts. My first layer is like a tannish, whitish color. Again, trying not to cover all the dark areas. After that, I'm going a little bit lighter. I'm brushing on a grayish white. Moving on to the witch hat, adding that uh, yellow to the ribbon. I'm just gonna keep bouncing back and forth between all the sculptures. So now I'm adding a greenish gray base coat on the uh, stem. And then I just went through, I'm just dabbing on some yellows and some lime green. The stem is just a tan with a little bit of black, a little bit of brown. And the blue mushroom, of course. I'm going to add some dark, some lights. You can see the two different blues I have there. I wanted it to be nice and bright. And I think this is like a, a lime green that I'm using on these little uh, knobs. Back to the witch, making the eyeballs now. And I'm using a gray-white. The only time that I use true light is for highlights. If you use white, you're not going to be able to see highlights. I'm adding some yellow highlights to the uh, moles. And just putting that black circle in there. You can use a hair dryer if you need to speed things up. And then I put the eye color right on top of that black circle. I try to leave just the edge showing a little bit. And then all it needs is a pupil and I basically did that all around. Now I'm going over some of the dark areas, putting some of those shadows back in there. Doing that with all the mushrooms. Just kind of outlining a little bit. And putting in some highlights, some different colors. More speckles. Painting those patches. As you can see, I'm not being super neat about it because I'm going to come through again. Highlights and lowlights, outlining some of those patches, drawing on that mouth, and you can see that I put just a dot of white in the uh, eyes as a highlight. Those super fine brushes that you see me using, I was really happy to find those because I'm always doing such detailed work. Those are actually nail art brushes that I got on eBay. So here you see me brushing on, this is straight white um, highlights, and I'm just letting the bottom there, the little ridges, catch my brush. Painting that base. And I'm pretty much done with everything. Just doing a few touch-ups here and there. And now all I have to do is um, spray a gloss on the uh, sculptures and this is what I used. If I wanted it to be matte, I would use Mr. Super Clear. I'm going to be adding some moss to the base, but I want to paint the moss first. I don't want it to be just green. I'm going to give it a pop of color. I'm not trying to cover every area of it. I want some of the uh, 
natural green to show through. And uh, once I complete this, I'm going to make sure this is absolutely dry. I'm going to glue it on to the sculptures. So this is the finished project and I do hope you guys were able to follow it pretty easily and uh, just want to say thanks for watching and I'll see you soon.